so generally uh, uh, some of the hazardous i mean elements are coming uh, into the atmosphere generally uh, those are not present <laughs> Good morning students welcome back to Plutus IAS so today is our 20, 26th day all right we have completed uh, 25 days of or uh, 25 days in 95 days prelims challenge so today is our 26th day right so today the topic is pollutants and pollution right this is also very very important topic when it comes to uh, the prelims especially prelims so every year we can see one to two questions from this uh, these areas pollution and pollutants right so first we will try and understand some aspects about the pollutants what cause the uh, pollutants are the what are the aspects that cause the pollution and later briefly we will study about the pollutants and later we will discuss about in detail about the pollution and uh, different types of pollutions and uh, what are the problems and in the end we will uh, discuss about three important aspects uh, when it comes to i mean those are the major things uh, things uh, but they are also importantly associated with the pollution right so pollutants so pollutants are harmful so, uh, harmful solid liquid and gaseous substances present in the environment at concentrations concentrations Inju uh, injurious to living biota so basically they are uh, harmful substances can be in the form of solid liquid or gaseous uh, substances in the they can be any form basically they are in the environment at the concentrations uh, that are uh, harmful to the living biota right so examples are some of the pollutants nitri nitrogen oxides from industry uh, that are released from the industry are pollutants because they contribute to smoke formation smog formation harming human well being right so context determines whether something is a pollutant or not so for example carbon dioxide when it is at the sufficient levels so it helps uh, maintaining the a uh, global uh, global uh, global average temperature but it exceeds when it exceeds its limit so it becomes hazardous hazardous causing global warming right so context determines whether something is a pollutant or not best example is carbon dioxide so if we see the some of the sources of pollutants uh, pollutants can originate from natural processes such as forest fire volcanic eruptions and they can also originate uh, from the human activities right so such as industrialization transportation and uh, burning of coal etc so all these are human activities right so anthropogenic uh, pollutants are more damaging as they are released to near uh, near to human settlements right common sources include uh, for uh, human activities the pollutants which are originating from the human activities so common sources are industrial activities transportation accidents like those involving nuclear power plants etc right common pollutants are chlorinated hydrocarbons heavy metals such as lead cadmium chromium and even mercury right and benzene so these are some of the common pollutants right so classification of pollute pollutants i have tried to give different types of classifications so that you can have a idea about the pollutants so based on the forms and uh, forms after release so they can be primary pollutants they are directly released into the environment uh, from their sources secondary pollutants are they are not directly released into the environment but they are pollutants are formed from the reactions with environmental uh, components so once a substance is released so it will interact with the other substance that is already present in the environment then it become a pollutant so those kinds of pollutants are secondary pollutants next qualification uh, so examples are uh, sulfates formed from the oxidation of sulfur dioxide it is example for secondary pollutant for uh, primary pollutants examples are sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen they are emitted from uh, burning of fossil fuels 
Next classification is uh, from the ecosystem point of view, biodegradable pollutants. I mean, these pollutants after certain time they are degraded into uh, smaller elements by the microorganism. So they become then become harmless. Next is non biodegradable pollutants. They are not easily broken into micro. Uh, not uh, easily broken down down by the microorganisms and they remain like that for a long long period of time so examples are heavy metals uh, phenolic compounds and the ddt similarly the plastic pollution plastic many types of plastics are also they are not biodegradable right <coughs> similarly other type of pollutants are on the basis of the range of their uh, effects so some of uh, the pollutants some of the pollutants are local pollutants their uh, impact or effect is confined, confined to uh, the local level uh, where they have been released similar uh, apart from that there are global pollutants their effect is felt at the global level even they are released at a point at a place their impact is felt at the global level so the examples are carbon dioxide and uh, chlorofluorocarbons they cause chlorofluorocarbons cause ozone depletion and carbon dioxide uh, causes global warming right so these are some uh, these are some of the types of uh, some of the classifications based on uh, which the pollutants can be classified right now we will come to the main topic that is pollution right first we will see the types of pollution so classification based on environment if we see the there are three major types of pollutions that is air pollution water pollution and soil pollution so you know uh, the basic information about these uh, three pollutions so i am not going deeper into these aspects next classif classification according to pollutions the pollutants themselves so pol there are different types of pollu pollutions uh, that is radioactive pollution you know when radioactive material used especially in the nuclear reactors uh, the pollution whatever uh, it is coming from uh, those uh, reactors we can say it is radioactive pollution uh, <coughs> so the sources are nuclear major sources are nuclear power plants mining activities medicinal facilities and uh, nuclear accidents next is sewage pollution so basically it is arising from sewerage uh, so it is basically urban phenomena next is pesticide pollution so it is coming from pesticides uh, and pesticide use noise pollution uh, thermal pollution so increase in water temperature in uh, natural water bodies that is called as thermal pollution plastic pollution you know marine pollution it is pollution in oceans smoke pollution smog pollution so formation of smog it is a mixture of pollutants including nitrous and nitrogen oxides volatile organic compounds and particulate matter so when these uh, uh, all these thing, uh, things form a uh, we can say mixture that uh, then smog is formed so that is smog pollution next is chemical pollution industrial pollution metal toxic uh, toxicity pollution so metals like uh, mercury cadmium etc uh, they also act as pollutants when they enter environment drug pollution so contamination of water bodies by pharmaceutical component uh, components when that takes place the drug pollution will occur next is biological pollution so introduction of harmful invasive species into environment and also pathogens when this happens that is known as biological pollution next is silt pollution so pollution water bodies by sediment and the silt runoff from erosion prone areas so when that occurs it is known as silt pollution next is soap and deter detergent pollution so we are using lot of different kinds of de uh, soaps and uh, detergents so when we use them uh, they are polluting water bodies that is called as soap and detergent pollution oil pollution when there is oil leak oil leak or accidents accidents to uh, the ships which are uh, uh, i mean containing the oil oil container when oil containers are damaged so oil will be released into the oceans so that is oil pollution so these are some of the different types of pollutions 
now we will try and understand about air pollution so if we see the definition of air pollution so it can be defined as the presence of uh, the presence in the environment uh, present in the atmosphere of solid particles liquid droplets and the gaseous components that are not normally present in the atmosphere or it can also defined as they are present in concentrations substantially greater than greater than normal levels right so this is the definition of air pollution so generally uh, uh, some of the hazardous i mean elements are coming uh, into the atmosphere generally uh, those are not present and uh, so the elements uh, that are already there in the atmosphere but there uh, we can say quantity has increased so in that uh, uh, time also the air pollution occurs right so characteristics and effects of air pollution uh, so it can include harmful substances such as sulfur dioxide nitrous oxides nitrogen oxides uh, chlorofluorocarbons carbon monoxide suspended particulate matter this also acts as act as a acts as a substantial substantious pollut, uh, pollutant similarly lead mercury so all these are uh, pollution agents right uh, if we see the sources of air pollution so natural so some of natural sources are there such as volcanic activity dust storms uh, in arid areas and the smoke from forest fires so these are some of the uh, natural sources so similarly anthropogenic sources are there we can say these are the major sources for air pollution such as uh, energy generation we burn coal for energy generation transportation so lot of vehicle uh, density in, uh, in our country especially on the entire globe that has been increased a lot so through the transportation also pollution pollutants are uh, being released and the manufacturing process refineries petrochemicals and mines so from the all these areas the pollution is air pollution is occurring now we will see the category uh, of uh, we can say area from where the pollution is originating and the source of the pollution and uh, emitting pollutants what are the pollutants that are coming from the process transportation so uh, in vehicles combustion engines will be there so they are releasing suspended particulate matter sulfur dioxide oxides of nitrogen carbon monoxide co volatile organic components so we call them a pvc so and the lead also being released from the vehicles if we see the category of power generation so the sources are electricity gas and steam generation the pollutants are suspended particulate particulate matter sulfur dioxide oxides of nitrogen carbon monoxide etc mining qua- mining and quarrying the sources are coal mining crude oil and the gas production store qu- stone quarrying so here also spms are released sulfur dioxide oxides of nitrogen vocs are being released agriculture so open burning of whatever biomass that is uh, remaining after the agricultural process so from here spo spms carbon monoxide and vocs are arising next one is community service so municipal incinerators are there where the uh, solid waste is being burnt to generate energy energy so in this in that process spms are generated sulfur dioxide oxides of nitrogen carbon monoxide vocs and lead is being generated so these are some of the areas and the sources of uh, air pollution right next is water pollution so <coughs> uh, as we all know it is the most precious natu- natural resource on our planet right so it is also important for sustenance of uh, we can say life on earth however human activities are polluting the natural wa- waters such as rivers lakes oceans uh, rendering them unfit for human consumption right so water pollution occurs when large amounts of materials are added to water bodies making them unsuitable for consumption or other purposes right so contaminants in water can be the contaminants can be organic 
inorganic radioactive acidic or basic in nature and they can also seep down and affect ground water right sources of water pollution point sources we can uh, classify them into two categories that is point sources uh, point sources are when substances are emitted directly into the water bodies from their source so examples are industrial discharge uh, pipes these pipes are uh, through these pipes the industrial waste that is directly released into the water bodies right these are point stores, sources similarly non point sources are there so pollutants enter water bodies indirectly through environmental changes such as runoff from agricultural fields carrying fertilizers into streams so the non point sources like agricultural runoff they are difficult to control compared to the point sources so because uh, it is very difficult to control the non point sources so fighting the uh, preventing the non point sources also becomes very difficult right now we see the types of water pollution right uh, the types of water pollution can be toxic chemical pollution so this happens when introduction of toxic chemicals into water bodies happens next is biological pollution so contamination of water by pathogens and disease causing organisms uh, then it is called as biological water pollution next is oil pollution so when uh, crude oil is uh, accidentally or uh, release accidentally released into the water it causes water oil pollution next is organic pollution so uh, introduction of organic matter into water bodies leading to depletion of oxygen uh, then it is called as organic pollution next is thermal pollution so increase in increase in water temperature due to industrial processes uh, this uh, this harms the aquatic uh, wildlife so then it is known as thermal pollution next is ecological pollution so disruption of aquatic ecosystems due to various pollutant pollutants uh, occurs that is called as ecological pollution so these are the some of the important types of water pollution right so now we will try to classify the sources of water pollution municipal sources so basically these sources occur in urban areas right so the sources are uh, water uh, water waste water from homes commercial establishments uh, containing suspended solids organic waste etc so these basically they form the municipal sources next industrial sources so industrial waste water uh, characteristics varying uh, varying uh, varying among industries so the basically the waste water or polluted water from the industries it is directly being released into the water bodies then uh, they are classified as industrial sources agricultural sources so uh, pollution from commercial livestock and poultry farming contribute this it is contributing to organic and inor inorganic pollutants so those sources are known as agricultural sources right next is rain uh, discharge drainage or discharge so rain water runoff carrying pollutants such as uh, highway debris etc so they uh, these uh, rain waters carry the pollutants into water bodies then uh, that source is uh, classified as rain drainage source so if we see the effects of water pollution so first major impact is health impact as we all know the polluted water causes a lot of health problems to human beings so some water pollutants are also carcinogenic so they uh, means they cause cancer in the human beings so <coughs> right similarly some other pollutants like polychlorinated biphenyls they can cause liver and nerve damage skin eruptions etc so as you all know there are many uh, health problems can occur with polluted water next is cultural and uh, natural uh, national impact so the water pollution diminishes the aesthetic quality of lakes and rivers right similarly uh, declaring holy rivers such as ganga and amuna uh, yamuna so if they uh, those rivers as de are declared as pollu pollute polluted so people distance from those rivers and uh, it is a damage to the cultural uh, heritage right <coughs> uh, similarly 
ఎన్వైర్న్మెంటల్ డిగ్రేడేషన్ సో సమ్ ఎఫెక్ట్స్ అనదర్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఎఫెక్ట్ ఈస్ ఎన్వైర్న్మెంటల్ డిగ్రేడేషన్ సో వాటర్ పొల్యూషన్ డ్యామేజెస్ నాట్ ఓన్లీ హ్యూమన్ హెల్త్ బట్ ఆల్సో ఈకో సిస్టమ్స్ అండ్ బయో డైవర్సిటీ సో వెన్ వాటర్ ఈజ్ పొల్యూటెడ్ ది డిపెండెంట్ బయో వీ కెన్ సే ది వైల్డ్ లైఫ్ ఆల్సో గెట్స్ అఫెక్టెడ్ సో దీస్ ఆర్ ది ఎఫెక్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ ది వాటర్ పొల్యూషన్ సిమిలర్లీ అదర్ ఇంపాక్ట్ ఈస్ రైట్ సో దెర్ ఈస్ ఏ నీడ్ ఫర్ అవేర్నెస్ జనరేషన్ అండ్ యాక్షన్ ఫర్ ప్రివెంటింగ్ ది వాటర్ పొల్యూషన్ సో చిల్డ్రన్ దే కాన్స్టిట్యూట్ అన్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ వీ కెన్ సే స్టేక్ హోల్డర్ ఇన్ ప్రివెంటింగ్ ఆర్ జనరేటింగ్ వెన్ ఇట్ కమ్స్ టు జనరేటింగ్ అవేర్నెస్ అబౌట్ ది ప్రివెన్షన్ ఆఫ్ వాటర్ పొల్యూషన్ సో దే హ్యావ్ టు బీ ఎడ్యుకేటెడ్ అండ్ దే షుడ్ బీ ఐ మీన్ ద అవేర్నెస్ హ్యాస్ టు బీ క్రియేటెడ్ అమాంగ్ ది చిల్డ్రన్ సో దట్ వెన్ దే బికమ్ ద ఐ మీన్ సిటిజన్స్ దే మే కాంట్రిబ్యూట్ అలాట్ టువర్డ్స్ ది ప్రివెన్షన్ ఆఫ్ వాటర్ పొల్యూషన్ రైట్ నెక్స్ట్ వీ విల్ సీ సాయిల్ పొల్యూషన్ రైట్ సాయిల్ ఫార్మ్స్ ద బేసిస్ ఆఫ్ ఫర్టిలిటీ నెసెసరీ ఫర్ హెల్దీ ప్లాంట్ గ్రోత్ సో యాజ్ యూ ఆల్ నో ఇట్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో వన్ ఆఫ్ ది ఇంపార్టెంట్ న్యాచురల్ రిసోర్సెస్ సాయిల్ సో డ్యూ టు హ్యూమన్ యాక్టివిటీస్ అండ్ మిస్యూస్ ఇన్ ద నేమ్ ఆఫ్ మోడర్నైజేషన్ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ లెడ్ టు ది సాయిల్ పొల్యూషన్ రైట్ సో ఆంథ్రోపోజెనిక్ కాజెస్ లైక్ సాయిల్ డిగ్రేడేషన్ ఇంక్లూడ్ పూర్ అగ్రికల్ ఇంక్లూడింగ్ పూర్ అగ్రికల్చరల్ ప్రాక్టీసెస్ డిఫారెస్ట్రేషన్ మినరల్ ఎక్స్ప్లాయిటేషన్ ఇండస్ట్రియల్ వేస్ట్ డంపింగ్ అండ్ ఇండిస్క్రిమినేట్ వేస్ట్ డిస్పోజల్ ఆల్ దీస్ ఆర్ కాంట్రిబ్యూటింగ్ టు ది సాయిల్ పొల్యూషన్ రైట్ సో కాజ ఇఫ్ యూ సీ ది కాజెస్ ఆఫ్ సాయిల్ పొల్యూషన్ సో సమ్ ఆఫ్ ద మేజర్ కాజెస్ ఆర్ సాయిల్ ఎరోజన్ సో ఆ సాయిల్ ఎరోజన్ యు నో ది టాప్ లేయర్ ఆఫ్ ది సాయిల్ విల్ బీ ఇరోడెడ్ డ్యూ టు మేజర్లీ డ్యూ టు వాటర్ అండ్ సమ్టైమ్స్ ఈవెన్ డ్యూ టు ది ఎయిర్ so these uh, due to these activities of these two agents the tops top layer of the soil is removed so in that case also soil uh, in that case soil pollution occurs next is deforest deforestation so when the forest is a uh, forest cover is removed for the purposes of food the timber fuel wood etc so then also the soil gets uh, depleted <coughs> next is use of chemicals such as pesticides insecticides and uh, herbicides uh, in the agricultural process these are also contributing to the uh, soil pollution similarly many chemicals hazardous chemicals are being used in the industries and industrial processes these are these are also contributing to soil pollution right next is uh, salinity acidity and alkalinity so irrigation with saline water leads to salt accumulation in soil uh and uh, it uh, subsequently reduces the fertility of the soil so in areas with ro- ra- uh, low rainfall alkaline compounds accumulate making soil alkaline and unsuitable for certain agricultural agricultural crops right similarly increased hydrogen uh, concentration hydrogen ion concentration leads to soil acidity uh, removing useful nutrient Uh, nutrient uh, compounds from the uh, soil causing infertility to the soil right similarly solid waste disposal so especially the municipal uh, urban uh, or municipal solid waste it is being dumped on the top layer of the soil so all the uh, chemicals both or organic and inorganic chemicals they seep uh, into the soil and uh, in that way they damage the soil next is impact of power plants so thermal power plants atomic and uh, thermal power plants and even electric power plants they contribute to pollutants like fly ash etc so the fly ash uh, when it settles on the top layer of the soil it also damages the soil so these are the these are the major causes of soil pollution so another important pollution is noise pollution right so <laughs> noise uh after a certain limit it is considered as unwanted or offensive sound it can lead to stress and various health issues so of late noise is also being classified as a pollution as a major uh, now in urban areas in urban and industrial areas it has become a major problem major 
problem right so uh, if we see the measurement of sound how it is being measured so it is measured in decibels right so a small increase in the decibel level corresponds to a significant increase in the intensity of sound so a small increase in the decibel may contribute a significant increase uh, increase in the sound intensity right so examples of sound levels include whispers are generally uh, whispers are at 20 decibels normal conver- conservation will be around 35 to 60 decibels and the rocket engine so it is at generally at 1 180 decibels so you can understand the intensity how much intensity is there when a rocket goes into the atmosphere right so sources of noise noise pollution uh, urban activities such as road air and rail transport they contribute significantly to noise pollution industrial operations right <coughs> construction activities uh, and uh, industrial operations like machines are being run continuously so these are some of the industrial sources right effects of noise pollution so noise affects human health and well-being in various ways causing annoyance sleep disturbance and interference with communication so these are all the problems faced uh, when noise pollution occurs next is prolonged exposure to noise can also lead to hearing loss uh, heartburn high blood pressure and mental illness so when continuous uh, exposure is there to noise pollution these type of dangerous things can also occur right so similarly people in noisy environments such as near airports or highways may experience may uh, experience increased headache and reliance on uh, they may rely, start relying on sedatives to overcome that uh, that noise right mitigation strategies can be vegetation so vegetation can help reduce noise level by absorbing sound so because of uh, this reason only nowadays Uh, uh, along the highways so the uh, tree lines or we can say tree lines are tree lines are being developed to absorb this sound and uh, absorb this uh, noise and uh, reduce the noise pollution right similarly noise creams made of made of soft or porous materials they can also be installed installed in high noisy areas next is technological solutions such as silencers and acoustic tiles they can also uh, used to reduce the uh, noise pollution similarly industrial uh, industrial facilities producing high noise levels should be located away from residential areas so these are some of the mitigation strategies to reduce the impact of impact of noise pollution right so these are some of the important aspects about the noise uh, sorry pollution and pollutants right <coughs> now we will see uh, three important components uh, which are very very important from the point of examination and they are associated with the pollution also right first one is greenhouse effect so greenhouse effect is a phenomenon where certain gases in the earth atmosphere they are known as greenhouse gases trap the heat and uh, they cause rise in temperature so basically this is called as greenhouse effect so there are as you all know there are many gases in the environment so they trap the uh, we can say the energy light that is coming from the sun and they trap this energy and cause rise in temperature so basically this phenomenon is known as the greenhouse effect right so if we see the <laughs> so without these gases without whatever the greenhouse gases are there so generally generally if we talk without these gases its average temperature would be significantly lower uh, making it unsuitable for sustaining life so if uh, if these gases are abs- uh, absent on the earth or uh, earth's atmosphere so the average temp- average temperature of earth could have been very less so in that way uh, it could have been unsuitable for survival of uh, life on the earth so if you take the example of moon or 
for that matter mars also mars etc so environment is uh, the these planets do not have uh, we can say best example is moon so because of the gra- i mean the lesser gravity the atmosphere there is no gases so because of that the i mean there is no heat trapped there so because of this reason the range of temperature range of temperature is very high on the moon uh, sometimes it goes to minus uh, negative uh, negative uh, negative sometimes it goes to uh, positive so there is a lot of uh, i mean we can say there is a huge range of temperature difference on the moon because absence of uh, atmosphere so when it comes to earth there are some gases which have the capability of trapping the energy that is coming from the sun so in that way the average temperature of earth uh, is higher and that average temperature is maintained properly means the range is very less range range means the difference between the high temperature and the low higher highest temperature and the lowest temperature so that is range is very less on the earth so because of these reasons earth is earth has become inhabitable so life is surviving on the earth so in that way the greenhouse effect plays an important role so function of the greenhouse effect so greenhouse gases such as water vapor carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide and ozone they act like the glass panels of a greenhouse so for example greenhouse is a glass box so these are the glass panels so what this glass panels do they allow the radiation incoming radiation uh, inside this uh, glass box and they also allow uh, some of the radiation to escape but some part of that uh, radiation is trapped within this uh, glass box so so some of the uh, we can say radiation is trapped in this glass box so it is the function of these greenhouse gas uh, gases so in this way the average temperature of earth has been increased so because of this reason we are able to, uh, we are surviving on the earth so these basically these gases act as glass panels by trapping some of the radiation that ha- that is coming from the sun so sunlight enters the uh, enters the earth's atmosphere and is absorbed by this surface by the surface surface gases so greenhouse gases trap some of this heat energy preventing preventing it from escaping into space thereby warming the earth's atmosphere so this is the greenhouse effect that is occurring on the earth's surface right potential effects of global warming so if it is generally occurring there is no problem but because of after the industrial revolution after industrial revolution so the uh, we can say quantity of these greenhouse gases carbon dioxide methane and nitrous oxides especially the carbon dioxide the quantity has been increased a lot the quantity of carbon dioxide has been increased so because of this uh, this reason they are trapping more radiation more heat that is uh, than that is required by the earth so because of this reason the average temperature the average temperature of earth is average temperature of earth is increasing uh, increasing a lot that is not required so because of this reason the rem- temperatures are uh, increasing so we call that phenomena as global warming global warming so earth is uh, earth's temperature is uh, increasing abnormally so we call that aspect as global warming so the we will now see the potential impacts of this global warming right so global warming resulting from the enhanced uh, greenhouse gas effect it is predicted to cause significant changes to temperatures at local regional and global levels so such studies projected that an increase in global mean temperature leading to melting of glaciers and the surface ice so when global temperature increases the ice that is trapped at the poles and even at the himalayas it can melt and the glaciers also can melt releasing all that water into oceans so because of that 
द सी लेवल्स में राइज बाय 20 सेंटीमीटर्स बाय 2030 एंड टू 65 सेंटीमीटर्स बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस सेंचुरी राइट सिमिलरली द राइजिंग सी लेवल्स कुड फ्लड द लो लाइंग लैंड्स एंड इन द रीजंस लाइक बांग्लादेश वेस्ट वेस्ट बंगाल इन इंडिया आल्सो द आइलैंड स्मॉल एंड आइलैंड्स लाइक मालदीव्स right they may face existential threats right so these are the impacts of the global warming right similarly it may also lead to more frequent occurrences of cyclones hurricanes floods uh, exacerbating the impacts of natural disasters uh, disasters so because of global warming the uh, occurrence of natural disasters may also increase similarly increasing water increase in water vapor in the atmosphere due to global warming it will intensify the rainfall resulting in more frequent floods flood events so when if we see the history of india india in case uh, we see uh, india the floods floods are have increased a lot even the regions like dry regions like rajasthan these areas also witnessing floods so we can say all these are because of the global warming right next important component is ozone layer depletion so when we were studying the conventions we have studied this convention montreal protocol so it has the protocol has come to uh, fight the uh, ozone uh, fight the release of ozone depleting substances uh, and also especially the chlorofluorocarbons right so the montreal protocol has been adopted to fight ozone layer depletion right now we will understand what is meant by ozone layer depletion and what are its impacts right so ozone layer basically it is located in stratosphere so it plays a crucial role in protecting life on earth by observing harmful ultraviolet b radiation that is coming from the sun so <coughs> because the radiation uv uv uh, ultraviolet b radiation is harmful for human beings harmful for human beings so recently there has been significant decrease in the thickness of the ozone layer leading to formation of holes in the ozone layer especially regions over regions like antarctica so at the polar uh, pole uh, at the polar regions so there there is a hole in the ozone layer right so the reasons for ozone depletion are so the release of ozone depleting substances into the atmosphere which include chlorofluorocarbons they are being the most significant contributors to the depletion of ozone layer other chemicals such as methyl bromide halons and methyl chloroform these also contribute to ozone layer depletion so process of ozone depletion right <coughs> so generally ozone layer is formed naturally in the atmosphere when ultraviolet radiation from the sun dissociates the oxygen molecule into atomic oxygen so general proce uh, process is when ultraviolet light uh, falls uh, enters into the environment so the ox oxygen uh, this atom is divided into uh, atomic oxygen so after this uh, free atomic atom um, uh, atomic oxygen uh, <coughs> form the ozone atoms so this is the natural process this atomic oxygen then combines with other oxygen molecules to form ozone so basically atomic oxygen uh, meets with another uh, oxygen atom o2 and forms ozone o3 so this is the natural process however ozone molecules can also be destroyed when they react with the halogen atoms such as chlorine and bromine uh, released from the ozone depleting substances so whenever <coughs> these molecules such as this hydrochloro uh, hydrofluorocarbons methyl bromide halons when these uh, we can say particles enter uh into the atmosphere they damage the ozone atoms and uh, 
they convert this ozone atoms into carbon uh, sorry carbon dioxide carbon dioxide and into oxygen atoms so in this way the ozone molecules are damaged right so this destruction process leads to decrease in the concentration of ozone in the atmosphere right this is the process of ozone depletion if we see the impacts of ozone depletion so one of the main consequences of ozone depletion is the increasing in increase in ultraviolet b radiation reaching the earth surface <coughs> so continuous exposure to radi radiation uv radiation lead to skin problems including aging and cancer <coughs> as well as immune system suppression and eye diseases right <coughs> so increased uv radiation will also impact the phytoplankton leading to disruptions in the marine marine ecosystem potentially contributing to global warming so further the damage of ozone layer uh, will lead to increased global warming right so efforts to address the ozone depletion uh, we can uh, we have already seen montreal protocol has been signed in 1987 so it uh, the protocol aim to reduce reduce the ozone depleting substances especially the chlorofluorocarbons so we can say <coughs> uh, the Mont montreal protocol has been successful and these substances have been reduced and we have uh, we can say have eliminated the use of these ozo ozone depleting substances so the latest satellite images are showing that the ozone laser ozone layer has been recovered recovered to some extent right so this is all about ozone layer next one is the next important aspect is acid rain so <coughs> it is acid rain is a consequence of air pollution caused by release of acidic pollut pollutants such as sulfur sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides into the uh, atmosphere so whenever there is uh, the mention of the acid rain you try to remember these two components that is sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide these are the primary cause for acid rain so with these pollutants react uh, these uh, pollutants when react with other water uh, with water vapor in the atmosphere they form sulfuric acid and nitric acid resulting in rain snow or fog with a ph ph below 5.6 right so acid rain has become a common phenomenon in regions like north america and europe due to industrial revolution as you all know so these regions northern america and europe are the uh, regions where industrial revolution has occurred so a uh, lot of uh, we can say pollutants pollutants have been released into the atmosphere in these areas so subsequently they have to see the occurrence of acid rain in those regions if we see the effects of acid rain uh, uh, acidification of natural water resources and a fresh water ecosystem so the fresh water ecosystems and uh, water resources they have turned into acidic so then it uh, becomes unfit for consumption or for uh, for use of any other uh, purpose next is leaching of the soil so acid rain can leach essential nutrients from the soil affecting plant growth and agricultural productivity right next effect can be damage to construction of materials and cultural heritage so acid rain corrodes materials like marble limestone and mortar leading to structural damage to buildings and uh, monuments so the best example is taj mahal in india so it is facing corrosion due to acidic emissions from local industry industries that are located uh, in and around the agra city agra so because of the release of the sulfur dioxide and the nitrogen oxides uh, acid rain is occurring and the white marble that is uh, uh, that is used for uh, in construction of taj mahal it is being corroded so because of that reason the color of taj mahal is changing next is human and health impacts so acid rain can directly affect human health through its impacts on ecosystems agriculture and air 
quality right so international dimension if we understand so acid rain is an international problem because pollutants responsible for its formulation can be travel long long distances from their sources right so there are disagreements over the causes and the solutions to acid rains uh, arise they uh, disagreements have been arisen so, <coughs> such as canada and the united states and uh, uh, among the european countries so there are disagreements and these disagreements are uh, existing uh, existing even now right so we can say i mean the point uh, take away point uh, take away point from here is it is a global problem it is a global problem so all the countries all the countries should unite to fight this problem so as you all know the developed countries they are not ready to uh, acknowledge their responsibility in in uh, the contribution their contribution to pollution especially the greenhouse gases so they should accept their responsibility and uh, contribute uh, to the uh, effective fighting of the uh, greenhouse gases and other pollutants right so these are uh, these are the three important components i thought were important from the point of view of examination now we will is now we will see some questions that are being asked uh, from this topic so first question it is asked in 2023 question is uh, consider the following statements regarding mercury pollution statement is first statement is gold uh, gold mining activity is a source of mercury pollution in the world second statement is cold uh, coal based thermal power plants cause mercury pollution third statement is there is no known safe level of mercury uh, uh, safe level of exposure to mercury so you can see all the three statements are correct so <coughs> so they are uh, i mean gold mining is one of the um, one of the sources for mercury pollution coal ba coal based thermal power plants are also source for uh, mercury pollution so there is also there is no safe level for exposure to mercury so basically uh, you might be uh, you might have heard about minameta disease this is this occurred in japan so it has basically occurred due to mercury pollution so mercury has been released into ocean waters and the fish have consumed this mercury and when human beings consumed the fish they got this disease minameta disease it occurred due to uh, mercury pollution so the answer is correct, uh, correct option is option c all the three statements are correct next question is Uh, it is asked in uh, 2020 question is which of the following are the reasons or factors for exposure to benzene pollution the sources are automobile exhaust tobacco smoke wood burning uh, using varnished wood uh, furniture using products made of polyurethane so select the correct answer using the code given below so the correct option is d 1 2 3 4 3 4 uh, and 5 so all these are act as sources for benzene pollution so right <coughs> next question it is asked in 2012 so the question is about acid rain question is acid rain is caused by the pollution of environment by a carbon dioxide and nitrogen so we have studied it is uh, not correct carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide it is also incorrect ozone and carbon dioxide it is also incorrect nitrous oxide and sulfur dioxide yes we have studied this one this is the correct reason for uh, acid rain it is caused by pollutants uh, nitrous oxide and sulfur dioxide in the environment right so these are some of the questions asked from this uh, this uh, topic this topic so, Uh, this is it for today thank you thank you for joining the class see you next time